Welcome back, my fellow duplicants, to getting started in Oxygen Not Included. This is episode six. So the last time we kind of set up this over here, and this is preparing to be kind of a flush your heat away cooler. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect our plumbing from the bathrooms over here, and then we're going to make use of that to transfer and delete a lot of heat and that will ultimately benefit us in a couple of different ways. One, we're going to be able to tap into this natural gas geyser nice and safe because we're not going to melt down our gas pump. And that is today's goal. I'm, and rather than being just 25 cycles, I'm just going to have a goal here, which is going to be get the power natural gas generator up and running. That's the primary goal of today's episode. At this point in the game, we don't necessarily need a lot more power, however, we do got this going on right here where we have a lot of different thermoregulators or potentially aqua tuners right there and those are power hungry things. So we're going to need to be able to run that stuff. And the reason we need to run that stuff is because we need to start temperature controlling our base. As you can see, there's some areas down here that are relatively hot. We're talking about 38 degrees Celsius and if you let the temperature continue to roll and get hotter and hotter and hotter, that will make things like maintaining farms and whatnot uh, quite a bit more challenging. For the most part, your base can get relatively hot before your dupes really don't like it, but ultimately we want to maintain a nice temperature for everybody inside of our main living area and also enable these these equipments over here to temperature control farms as necessary because they're going to be a major source of food and that's going to last us for hundreds and hundreds if not thousands of cycles. I don't know about thousands, but maybe. There's other reasons as well as we're going to potentially tap into some sources of oil, so we're going to need to do some more heavy processing. Anyhow, you can never have too much power. So what I want to figure out here is I've got this natural gas generator. So this natural gas generator will consume 90 grams a second of natural gas, which is not a whole lot when compared to the actual vent up there, usually. Uh, it also has polluted water that it's going to give out. So that's 67.5 grams a second. The carbon dioxide is also going to be vented out of this machine as well at 22.5 grams a second, but it's going to give us 800 watts. So if we wanted to take that polluted water and turn it into clean water, we'd need yet another water sieve to do that. But then we'd have, again, another source of clean water that we can use. And the nice benefit of this is that it could be at a lower temperature if we keep that natural gas generator nice and cold. In the current build of the game, uh, it, the water that comes out of that natural gas generator will be at the temperature that it is currently. I guess, even though I've never tested it, I just had this idea. What happens if you were to simply take that and put it in a bottle? It's just like we're doing down here. Could that become a source of oxygen? Hmm. It would be legitimately a source of cold oxygen. Like, that would be awesome. I can't turn away. It's time for an experiment, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so 24 hours later and... You know, I still haven't really confirmed or denied if that is a fantastic idea I just had or if it's just terrible. About all I've determined is that the amount of time... Where in the world? And This is so mad. Am I in the wrong... I'm in the wrong map. Wow. All right, this looks better. <laughs> Okay, so what, uh, we're tapping into the natural gas geyser. We're going to plug in the power. That's the thing. We, and what we were talking about there is using the thermal regulator to cool down the generator, which is going to be a fantastic idea. It doesn't actually use as much power as you might think. So we can go ahead and use a thermal regulator as opposed to an aqua tuner. Based on the early signs of the experiment, I didn't actually finish the experiment. I got distracted on top of distracted and ended up playing Battlefield with a friend. And I'm trying to resist the urge to do the calculations, figure out just what the thermal difference is from the system going into the system coming out because I have a feeling that it would be self-cooling. But no, no, I'm not gonna calculate it. Keep it simple, keep it simple. This is introduction to oxygen not included. However, you know, it's, no, no, keep it simple, Brothka, just keep it simple. Come on, no, don't do this. Oh my goodness, 105,000, yeah. Okay, yep, 
Moving on. Nope, nope, stop, focus, Brothgar, focus. All right, so what I want to do here in order to make this gas cool enough, or to ensure that it's going to be cool enough, that it isn't going to destroy the gas pump, is I'm going to want to hook that thermoregulator up to it. So to do this, what we're going to want to do is go in and out of this device right there. So this will be laid out fairly simply, just like this, and then it'll come back. One thing we will want to do here is that uh, this is going to go out the green, which is not what we'd want here. We want this to be the opposite. We want to go out here and then in back on this side. So I'm going to deconstruct that and flip it so that it's actually facing the other direction. Here's the other thing I'm going to do. We've seen this a couple of times. Uh, I could just do this with a normal tile. Just put two tiles right here. And what I'm going to try to do is re build the, the wall that's inside of here and then I'll get rid of that one there because I don't need them. That way I can dig this out so it isn't just a chunk of sedimentary rock and kind of a weird spot. Meanwhile down here we're going to have a natural gas generator and what we can do with this natural gas generator is that it, it will give off really really cold water and we're going to use that cold water to cool this down. So we can, what we'll do is we'll create a little bit of a loop, a loop down here which is going to be very 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 cold polluted water. At that point, we can decide what we want to do with that polluted water because it would be very easy. We could just take it and bring it back up into the same spot here. It is clean. It is germless. So we might be able to do something a little bit more useful with it. But, you know, you can always rework those pipes if you really want to. So I don't have a bona fide plan for that right now. I'm just going to focus on making it nice and cool. So let's try to plan this out. Natural gas generator probably... We're going to interfere with this habitat a little bit down here. Sorry, guys. It'll be all right. They're all going to try to escape anyhow. So to set this up, probably going to make it out of gold amalgam. It's just kind of a good standard to go with. Let's see if I can figure out a way to build this wall without letting the hydrogen or the drecos out. Hmm. How am I going? How am I going to do that? I'll start by digging this, because I know I want to dig that. I would like to leave a gap here in the case that we want to run out here and do something, and also to do a little bit of pipe works and stuff. I don't want to make that too tight. There should be a way to build this section, that section, that section, and just kind of work our way back. I don't know, there's a whole Draco strategy. We'll zip through the night. You can see we now have 164,000 calories, so that's going really, really good. How's our digging going on? Not bad over here. We do have this up there, but we haven't really done much with that. We haven't really dug out this way or any further this way. I definitely had a plan down here for this liquid reservoir as far as sieving this stuff up. So I'll get that up and running. I'm going to want to go in on the right, come out on the left. So we could just take care of that. I'm not too worried about the heat on this thing. It's not really that big of a deal. It's going to end up over here anyhow, so. Uh, if anything, you might want to actually make this insulated tile down here because that's where it actually does a lot of its thermal connecting, I guess. Conducting is between the, the tiles that it's sitting on for whatever reason inside those liquid tanks. Uh, since I have chlorine and stuff down here, that's not very thermally conductive. I don't think it's going to be much of a big deal. Okay, so if you press O, you can flip your equipment. So there we go. We're going to feed that like so. And we're also going to want to prepare to have a little extra of hydrogen find its way into this thing. So a really good way to just pump into a loop like this is to just use a branch. Very simple branch. And then we can just tee off of this thing. And we'll just end up deleting this stuff once it's all full. And I can't get to that spot. Well, I'll have to deconstruct some stuff and put some stuff back. There we go. All right, so what I should be able to do here is build that tile and this tile now because I've already closed that off. So that way I don't end up with a big hole. I can kind of build through the corner there. I have an unreachable build, so I can actually jump up two tiles. So if I just do this number, then I should be able to go up there and get to those. Except for that tile, so 
So then we're just going to go through there. Boom, like so. Probably going to want to throw some power down here. And we're going to want all of that to be connected. Darn it. I'm gonna re deconstruct that tile. <laughs> Alright, let's see if I can if I can do something tricky here. If I build these two tiles. Yeah, I should be able to build that tile, then I should be able to build this tile, that tile, this tile, that tile. Alright, so here's what I'll do. Same thing that we kind of have going on up here. Uh, it's a fairly effective way to probably keep that hydrogen inside of there. Is I'm going to take a door. I'm going to build that down there. Just create a very small airlock. Sort of. Not like a real sophisticated airlock. Basically creating this one tile hallway to where it's kind of hard to get through so that the gas has we can't get out of the way because you have to push gas out of the way in order for another gas to take its place you can't have two types of gas in the same tile so if you restrict something to a single tile then it'll be a lot harder for it to for gas to flow through there so in this setup we've just made it hard for hydrogen to get through here and then if I put that door on top it'll be even harder so but will it keep the Dracos in? No. Not at all possible. Here's where we're going to put the pneumatic door. That's my Draco defense. So I'm going to open this up based on what I've learned from the last hatch farm. Kind of understand that a little bit more. This way they'll basically have the unlimited room and they'll also be able to reproduce very quickly. Now that they're all tame. So they should continue to have their reproduction be nice and high. And then I can, well... Pretty much just get a whole bunch of extra eggs and stuff out of it. But you see how many critters I have? Like 15, 20. This thing's not even going to run because it's outside of a room anyhow. Yeah, see? <laughs> yeah. Okay, there's a lot there. All right. I'm going to take this up and I'm going to copy that tile down here. And I'm going to try to close off that area there. See how many Dracos make it through. See, they've all smelled the hole there. They're like, hmm. Mm, construction up here. Construction, look, see? See? They're checking it out. They're... Where's my metal smashing machine? Hmm? Where'd that go? There should be a rock granulator somewhere around here. Hello? And I never put it back down. Probably because I don't have a good spot for it. Ah, <laughs> oh, darn it. All right, well, it'll be placed over in this area. I think that's a good spot. It's near the storage. It's kind of out of the way, and it's also near all the construction. Good idea. Ooh, we get a mirth leaf seed. We can go ahead and put one of those down. You look at the furniture. Do we have hanging? Oh, we do have hanging, hanging pots. Excellent. This is a frequent area that people go through. So we'll try to put one up right there. Just make it look nice. There you go. We can put a little mirth leaf. What? No Dracos have made it out. No hydrogen is flowing freely. So that's work. What? Okay, forget the whole hanging plant thing. I think it had to... <laughs> I think it had to do with the crown molding. Maybe. Maybe not. I'm not 100... I'm not, I don't know. Uh, okay, so we're gonna put another floor plant there. We'll put another floor plant right there. There we go. We'll make use of them. Some way, somehow. Hey, only one Draco made it out. Okay, so the thing that I'm going to do inside of here is I'm going to put a natural gas generator. Uh, not there. Whoops. Going to put it right, right, right there. So what's going to happen is that the carbon dioxide is going to come out in a pipe. However, the polluted water is just going to drizzle down. So because it's just going to drizzle down and we want it to be nice and cold and we kind of want to preserve that, we will need to put some insulation around this thing. We can see the gas pipes here that we're going to going to have to deal with. So to make this nice and cold, ooh, we got wolframite, that'll be excellent. Uh, I'm just gonna put that right there. And then I'll use a gas pipe thermal sensor right there. And then you can put the gas shut off valve on top of that. So I didn't really give myself a ton of room here, but so the cold is going to find its way out right here. And then the hot return <laughs> is going to not be like that. Nope, nope, nope. It's going to be just like this. The nice thing about building this right here is that we already have hydrogen nearby. So that's the perfect medium that we need 
in order to do that thermal transfer, just like we did intentionally up here, where we put hydrogen up in, up in this spot. We have it down here, perfect. All right, so I plugged in the shearing station, might be able to get a little bit of reed fibers off of this little uh, Dreco here. Ruby's got it. If we go a little slower, we might be able to see it. There we go. Swing. Oh no. What? Ruby, you're just leaving the Dreco. It's escaped the machine. Ruby. <laughs> this door strategy has worked out perfectly. Ruby, seriously. <clears throat> get back to work. No sleeping on the job. Uh, oh, maybe this time. Aha, there we go. <laughs> uh, okay. So we're going to build that up. We're also going to dig it as well. There we go. Power wise, we're going to connect all of this together. It all needs to be the same thing. We're going to have a pump down here. That's going to detect the liquid, the polluted water that's you know, coming off the natural gas generator. We no longer need the shear, <laughs> so we'll get rid of that. Let's get rid of the wires that I built there. All right, so for the carbon dioxide, I have some carbon dioxide. What I'm doing right down here is I'm pretty much just trying to store that stuff in some tanks. Um, but I think a good spot to dump a fair amount of our carbon dioxide right now, since we're not going to have a significant amount of it, and I really don't need to store more of it, I'm just going to put it right there. And it's also not going to be a significant amount of heat either, or it might actually be cold. I have not looked at the gas and what it looks like when you bring it out of this machine. Anyhow, it's just going to go right down here, like so, and into that. Because I'm always running one of these terrariums down there, so that'll deal with the extra carbon dioxide. Same thing that we're doing with the coal generator. So I didn't give myself quite enough room to get through here. So that's not going to be a thing. I'm not going to just run through that area. So don't have to worry about that. What I will want to do, to do, if it's possible, if I can do this very, very quickly, I will build that tile. Yeah, more escaping Dracos. Ha! Ha! Take that. Leap's happy about it. Look at him. Okay, I want to build this pit three wide. So that way I can use a liquid pump down there. And then I can also use a liquid sensor. So this is automation. Just do a hydro sensor down there. And that is just going to detect when we have enough to efficiently pump, run the pump. You can see we've got a little bit of chlorine in there. That's not a big deal. We also got some hydrogen up here. I think all I'm going to do is just take this and I'm just gonna add this last layer here. All that's doing is just compressing that hydrogen down uh, because we will get a little bit of polluted oxygen in there. But it's not going to be a big deal. I'm just going to take an automation wire, run it between that. There we go. I need a gas intake for this. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to put a bridge right there. And then I'm just going to use some more insulated stuff. Temperature should not be an issue. We're just going to go across this and then down into here. Now, it might be a good idea at this point to say, okay, well, I want to have a gas reservoir that this feeds, and then it goes, you know, past that. I would say that that would be a pretty good idea. So we can put a mesh tile right there. It actually, it could just be an airflow tile, but it uh, doesn't really matter. I'm just going to get rid of those because I'm going to build those. And then on top of that, we'll feed a gas reservoir. This will just allow us to build up a lot more in case that, uh, in the situation that we're not running this natural gas generator that much. Now, something like a bislite is really good to kind of keep around if you can, you know, avoid digging it up. Because look at the, look at its thermal conductivity. It's zero, basically, or, or pretty darn close to it. So it does not transfer thermal energy. If you can keep that stuff around and make it, you know, use it uh, to separate two areas, one that needs to be hot, the other that needs to be cold, then that would be very beneficial. We used to be able to build things out of a bislite. But that's no longer part of the game. We actually have to work quite a bit harder to get to something that's going to have that amount of insulation or that level of insulation. So I'm just going to do a little bit of gas pipes, rework them a little bit. So that's going to go in there and that's going to come out there because I don't really care about this one. We're just going to hop on over it. So there goes carbon dioxide. 
I have a lot of jobs that have been mastered once again. <laughs> Current morale, 18 of 12, 17, 14. Looks like I can move a fair amount of people up if I wanted to. One thing you want to look out for is if you see this exclamation mark, you can see right there, exosuit engineer. It'd be a great thing to have, but unfortunately, we're not there with the morale just yet. Another thing we're going to want to probably have in this area, we don't need that, we don't need that, don't need that, is so we're going to have, want to have a liquid reservoir. And that's just for what we're going to be pumping out of here, so that we can store it inside of that. We, it's not going to, we're not going to have a lot of liquid down there. It won't be very much, maybe 10 kilograms at most. Again, we're going to want to use insulated tiles this entire way. All right, so just to cool the oxygen that's coming out of here, all I'm going to do is just create a very simple loop just like we've done before and then do the exact same thing so a liquid pipe thermal sensor that's going to, need to go right there actually right there and then that's going to run a shutoff valve right there and then at that point we're right back to insulated pipes because it's going to be really really cold all right so we can see that that thing's running we got the liquid it's flowing up and around and if we look at the germs yeah you can see there's still quite a bit of germs inside of there that's being introduced but they should be going down fortunately we got a little bit of carbon dioxide that's found its way in there so the chlorine is floating around a little bit i left this open too long i think one way i could get rid of some of that is if i just deconstruct that for a little bit and then build one of those We'll push oxygen up to the top there, and get rid of the carbon dioxide, which leaves chlorine to float around. Oh, but I'm out of water. Well, this has become a non-issue over there, so... And I actually have water right here. So if I do this number, this is kind of a lot of, a lot of work for what I'm doing, but... Okay, so kind of a band-aid, but it should work. You know that terrariums down here absorb water at 300 grams a second. I've got lots of water. It already has algae, so we'll just let it run for a little while and then disable it. I don't really need any of this. This is just not necessary at this point. We can mop a lot of it up. Oh, and that'll give us our water, won't it? Yeah, okay, so we can cancel this. <laughs> let this run for a cycle or so. You can see that the germs in there, yeah, they're, they're, they're they want to go away. We keep introducing more and more germy uh, clean water so it keeps going up and up as far as the amount of germs that are in there once this thing is full once it reaches 5,000 kilograms or we stop introducing more to it then the germs will actually start to die off and go away that is if we can get chlorine around it you can see that they're dying off at a, a fairly rapid pace at this point you can see dying off three percent per cycle because it's clean water what I really want that to be is chlorine Maybe by flipping this to an airflow tile here and here, I can let that uh, carbon dioxide get out of the way. Just trying to solve a small problem at the moment. You can see at this one, every once in a while, it flips on over to something different, so the chlorine's flowing around. Anyhow, yeah, you'll get the idea. For the most part, uh, this is all pretty much done. We were able to we we're able to deconstruct a lot of this stuff here. Just get rid of it. And we're just making a spot where we can dump the polluted water, regardless of whatever it is, and, and put it in this spot. So just reconfiguring that. Kind of lost focus for a moment here on this. What we want to do is take that in, and this out. And now that I have a rock granulator, I can go ahead and make some more iron because I need some more. Okay, so if we take a look at the temperature here, you can see that it's pretty warm around here. There's a lot, a lot of heat coming off this electrolyzer. Things are starting to get a little toasty. But we're about to fire up our first machine. That's really going to be focused on taking care of that. So I've got a battery that I want to hook up to this. I kind of just want to put it right here. So if I do that number, I should still be able to get through there. We'll kind of maintain this. And then down here, I could just use a little manual generator to kickstart everything. Hmm, probably should have made that door vertical. 
And yeah, you can still go through a vertical door. Just like that. Just like we saw down here. You know, not a big deal. And then, copy this, because we don't want all of that going crazy. Hmm. <laughs> we don't need this up here. And automation-wise, I think we will want to plug this into that. Whoops. Deconstruct this. Th I looked away for two seconds. You can see that we no longer have any germs in there, so that's great. I'm going to want to sweep that level, level 9 million. Construct these right there. I'm going to reposition the bottle emptier. I'm also going to give that a spot. I'm going to deconstruct this building. And now I should have a bottle emptier somewhere, wherever that is. Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> there it is. Okay, so that is only going to be for polluted water. Very important to keep this swept only. Otherwise, I'll pick up all of this, and that's not what I want. And now undo the mistakes I've done already by putting that back. And then storing bleach stone inside of there. But you can see all this water. And actually, I don't think I already have the chlorine. It's kind of already done its job. At this point, we might as well just stay out of it. <laughs> Look at all these eggs. Are you kidding me? So I'm going to start to store a small number of these eggs just to kind of keep them down there so that I don't have an unlimited amount of hatches. Uh, I've got 17, which is currently... It's enough. Yep, it's enough. But I do want to store these eggs in a spot actually where they won't be eaten. That would be nice. So we'll get rid of that. And that way none of these hatches down here accidentally like grab one. So there we go. Have a bunch of eggs in there. The one thing I don't have is stone hatchlings. I'm going to try to raise those if I can raise a particular type of hatch. I'm just going to put a little deodorizer over there. There's going to be a little bit of polluted oxygen, oxygen that makes its way out of there, but not a big deal. Not much. All right. So I think we're to the point. Okay. So the pipe is blocked. What are we doing? Oh boy. They never did connect all of that. So let me copy that up and we're going to bring that down. So this will start to fill, fill this area with uh, natural gas. And we're going to prime the loop with hydrogen. So there we go. We're priming the loop. The natural gas is flowing. You can see the natural gas geyser now has room to vent at, well, about the same rate that this pump is actually taking it in now, isn't it? Now, if I remembered my automation wire, I didn't, I didn't remember it. Okay, it's important to hook this. It's also important to make sure that that's connected. Well, I don't know. Neutronium properties. Yeah, they definitely don't transfer any thermal energy. You can get away with nothing there if you really wanted to. But now that this is up and running, we should see that the temperature inside of here is going to rise uh, somewhat. Although we're trying to cool it down here as well. So what we can do is we can now shut this off and that'll just close the door. There are ways to set this up to where you can go through and back using a, a weight plate. Um, but for something that we don't go through that often, then that works just fine. So this is going to become active. I always set this like 20 and 90 is usually a pretty good number. We never did finish the automation wire, so we got to go do that. There we go. And because I think it's a great idea, maybe, <laughs> we're going to make sure that we have enough hydrogen inside of here to always make sure that we got a lot. We're going to have ourselves a natural gas geyser powering a natural gas generator with a buffer reservoir and that's going to be filling a liquid reservoir which we are then going to use to cool our electrolyzer therefore cooling our base and once we're done with that water once it's heated up it will then flow back into the electrolyzer to be used up as it creates more oxygen it's only going to supply a little bit of the water that the electrolyzer actually needs, because that takes a one kilogram per second. So it's a lot of water. Okay, so this is set to be above 21. I thought I set that above 21, so the water will come in and hopefully be nice and cold. If it's hot, then we're just going to get rid of it. And it will be hot to begin with. Oh, darn it. 
<laughs> ah, forgot this wire. It's gonna be a fun one to get to. Ha ha! Nope. So I want this to be above 10 kilograms, and then we're actually going to pump that water. You can see the water right now is at 36 degrees, which is not really what we want. We would like it to be nice and cool. However, it's not gonna be... Shoot, it's polluted water. Oh, what was I thinking? I wasn't, that's what. Well, that'll be slightly damaged, not a big deal. That's why I leave the doors on it in case you make a mistake. So the polluted water does need to go somewhere else. So I'm going to bring it down here in, into this thing. Considering this will probably be dealing with hot water, I'm going to convert it to an insulated pipe so that it no longer bleeds heat into my base. So that's this wire, uh, not wire, pipe. So there's a lot of pipes being built right now. So this will be a relatively cold temperature, but once it goes through there, it's going to come back out at 40. Since I'm already cleaning up the, the germs here, or at least I already have, I can use that for a little while just to bring it back. If it doesn't stay in here though, it's not going to become clean. But then again, this is not going to be germy anyhow, so it's not, it shouldn't be an issue. And if it's anything, it's just gonna be a little bit of food poisoning. So it's not, it'll die off in like two seconds. So I'm just gonna take that, bring it back over there. So now I have a, another source of nice uh, clean water instead of this one down there to feed the electrolyzer so that we keep producing oxygen inside the base. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so now to get rid of the some of the gas here, we can just cancel to construct that. What I'm going to want to do is do the exact same thing that we did here. So we can get rid of some pipes, get some other pipes built. Now we got a little bit of polluted water in there and that really caused some issues. There we go. I'm gonna wanna sweep that up. See, that's why I leave that door there. Really, really, really helps in some situations where you accidentally get stuck. You can see there I also have some oxygen, so I'm going to want to re-enable that and turn this to off. And set that to below. There we go, run it a little bit, get that oxygen out of there. There we go. Gosh darn it, now we got some more. Ah. All right, good deal. That's all been taken care of. What happened here? Hey, who was playing around with... <laughs> and knock it off. You don't need to be on this thing unless it's like 1%. Make sure you feed this on the correct side. Usually helps. Seriously, just throw a bunch of stuff at it until it works. Oh, we're almost there, we're almost there. Wow, okay, that uh, doesn't need to be that cold. That can just be set to 90 degrees Celsius, not not eight. Some really cold natural gas up there. Kind of looked away for a moment. Or actually, that could be set all the way up to 100. It's not going to break anything. I want this to be set to above negative 18 degrees Celsius. So this should run a lot to start off here. There we go. We deconstruct all of these gas pipes. We don't really need them. We're bringing in a little bit more hydrogen, just a little bit more and a little bit more. Okay, that's enough. We can just get rid of all of, all of these pipes. We just don't need them anymore. So what we should be seeing here is that this is going to get nice and cold while this is trying to get warmer up top. All right, so we set up our liquid loop to work out last time. So let's go ahead and just do this number. We're actually going to start to use it now. So we're going to use a couple of bridges just to hop across that. And then we're going to deconstruct this chunk of liquid pipe right there. And then we're gonna hop back on over. And then we will route from here and eventually right up into that spot right there. So we're going to make sure that it isn't connected to this over there, otherwise it just won't work. Okay, so now that's doing its number. And at this point, we want to get rid of this liquid bridge. It's not going to be there anymore. Deconstruct these liquid pipes. Those are not going to be there anymore. But what we're going to replace it with is ones that are just right there. So the reason we've done that is because the overflow is back here, not down there. If it was right there, then this thing would, that we'd never build up 
the liquid back here that we really need to build up. And that's going to be our heat sink. So we're bringing this in at 40. And by the time it makes its way out, what we should see is that it's now 54 degrees. And at this point, it's going to run over here, go through this, and we should see that, hey, it's back to 40. So that's how we're deleting that heat. So we can really deconstruct all of these liquid pipes down here because those are no longer used for anything. Now what is being used for something is this down there. We still have a reason to run at least one algae terrarium down there to deal with that carbon dioxide that we are dumping into that zone. So we have clean water there and we can jump it across. <laughs> you move these pipes around so much it's hard for it not to become a mess. Some people are true masters. Uh, you know, compared to all of my other efforts, this is not half bad. Okay. I'm feeling slightly... I'm feeling like I've, I've done something correct. Now, if this is hot, I'm just going to get rid of that. We're going to jump over. And now I have another spot, which means I probably want to make all of this insulated from here on out because, yeah. Ah, pipes! So many pipes! Alrighty, so there we go. So we're going to set this to 300. I'm going to disable this machine. So now we only have one of those. Those are still pumping out the oxygen. Look at all this polluted water down there. Insanity. How many of these do I have in here? 18. Why are people starving? What do you eat something? Oh, well, we have 75,000 omelets. Look at that, plus four morale. Fantastic. I would say I have enough to feed everybody delicious omelets at this point. That's going to be a real bonus for people that are looking down. What do we got for food, though? We can kind of hover over this and see where all the food is. You can see omelets. We have meal lice, not terribly delicious, and we have meat. That's why, because we're not... Oh, because we don't have water. Therefore, lice loaf is not happening. Well, you know what? Since we have two primary sources, we could actually just eat the meal lice. We don't really need to worry about the water right now. I've got more than enough food, and that means I'm not going to use up the water, right? Because that uses 50 kilograms of water every time we multiply that food out. But now we have a higher food capacity, so it's not a big deal. And we have no shortage of eggs on the way, so yeah, fantastic. So this down here, it could become germy from that. I don't think I don't think I'm at much of a risk right now. I seem to know what I got going on there. Inside of here, we should see that this is getting nice and cold. So it's at 18 degrees Celsius. You can see that this is still detecting that it's you know six seven degrees or so. And that hydrogen is just ripping around. Not often do we get more hydrogen to go out, but we are increasing the amount of hydrogen here that way. Polluted oxygen just stays down there. It may not even give off at that pressure if it's not in a bottle. I can't fully remember at the moment. Too many details. Uh, so now, look at this. My dupes have nothing to do. We're just waiting for this to become nice and cold. Oh, okay. So I have hooked this up to be a nice cold loop. I have not hooked this one up to be nice and cold. And if I'm honest, this is the one that's going to do most most of the work. I tell you what, let's just do a little bit of digging here just to see what else is over here. I've got all these dupes. We can queue up a little bit of an exploration somewhere around here. <laughs> There's got to be something else besides just all of this nothingness I'm, I'm currently digging through. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to put one of these up there. That'll give some shine bugs somewhere to go and be extra happy. That should hopefully make them go from wild to tame. There you go. Hey, way to be happy. So we'll get some shine bugs up in here. 
Yeah, well, we did dig down a little bit farther. Mm, nothing there. What about over here? Then <laughs> it's got like a, a massively long run uh, to get all the way over there just to see what's what's going on. Like they're trying to hold their breath the entire time. Ah, here's a fun idea. We'll send them over here to dig out a little bit. Then I'll build a storage bin down here and that's where we're gonna put some ice. <laughs> I might as well just dig this out. Uh, although everything's so happy down there, like I don't even wanna touch it. It's like my nature preserve or something. All right, so all of this has been done and dealt with. Not that I necessarily need to get rid of the pipes, but... So you can see the polluted water is now backing up and it should continue to back up further and further until we get to a spot where we know it's just gonna keep running and running and running. It's not big, just gonna keep going. So here comes the next day and each day it's going to back up a little bit further. So you can see here, now we're taking all of that heat away well, not all of it, but we're definitely cooling it down and it backs up further. So last yesterday was like right there. Now it's a little bit further. This is all extra water that we have available to us. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some liquid pipe. We're going to go up into this and then we're going to go down to that. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put a clock sensor so that this thing only runs for a certain amount of time each day as far as how long it can be open. This will allow liquid to store up in this tank up here, and that is just seems to be where all of this chlorine is really settled out. So this bottom one will probably drain out, given enough time. Uh, so that should have let me purify any of the germs that are coming out of the bathrooms out of this. There is going to be a couple of spots that will be a little bit germy, but that is going to be such a, an insignificant amount in the full scheme of everything that's going on here that it won't be a problem. And where did all of this polluted water come from? Hmm. No idea. Oh, are you guys dragging this stuff out of here? Is that what's going on? These dupes. You guys are dragging ice. I only want polluted ice here. What do we got? Are these selected to liquefiable? No, they're not. Uh, I have no idea where that came from. Did I deconstruct a pipe or something? Oh, what a mystery. All right, so I guess we got our first chunk of water there. It's at 29 degrees Celsius. And if you're above 21, it should run. There you go. And boom, it passes on. I don't think that's gonna be enough water ever to really keep that thing cool. All right, so what happened here is, for whatever reason, I got it in my brain that that was gonna be enough water coming out of this to pump it through there and that would keep it cool. But that's not really what it's for. Uh, I don't know why I decided to think that way. I was just thinking of a whole different experiment. Uh, somehow decided to bake it into this video because that's what I do. Oops. But what I want to do here is flip this thermal aqua tuner around and what we're going to do is we're going to run this pipe out over here and then back into that guy. This one will need power. We're also going to need to run all these pipes around. So there's a good amount of that to be built. Okay, so now we're going to seed this thing with polluted water. And it's important that we use polluted water because it gives us a greater range to work with rather than just clean water. Because clean water is going to freeze near zero. Polluted water in this game freezes near negative 20 so we're going to just bring this pipe that we have right there we're just going to bring that in for a little while and start to fill up this loop so this is only going to be active if it's above 21 degrees so that gives us a good working range to go with so it's nice and safe we're not going to accidentally freeze the water inside the pipe and then that causes some issues or at least we shouldn't i've already what oh when you guys went back in there. All right, darn it. Well, there's an interesting idea. What if you take polluted oxygen and you dump it on the ground in like a hallway like this when you're digging out over a long ways? So then it gives off oxygen in that area so that your dupes can breathe rather than have to hold their breath while they're going through a giant tunnel. Hmm. Interesting idea. Okay, so I filled this up uh, and obviously it's all quite a bit hotter really don't need a ton of it in there so we can just get rid of that liquid bridge there we go <sighs> did I really just do that 
There. Now it's facing the right way. <laughs> I have too many critters. Oh no. <laughs> no, I don't want to auto wrangle the extras, please. But I will get rid of the sage hatches because I don't really want those. There we go. Turned them into food. Delicious. Okay, so here we go. Now it's running. We've cooled it down. So it's nice and cold. You can see it's seven, 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 something. And what it's doing here is it should be heating up. You can see it's cold. And as it heats up, we should see that all of a sudden it will click on over to the next spot to go down. And those two are 22 and 21 degrees. So that way it protects itself, right? There goes three, how much got through there? Perfect. So if you take a look at the temperature here, you can see it's, this is a nice cool spot now. So I can go ahead and move that wheeze wart back in there. So this should work enough here to, over time, kind of start to cool down all the oxygen that's coming out of there. You can see when it does get introduced, it's nice and nice and it's really nice and cold. I can set this to be a little bit more aggressive if I want it to, to like 15 degrees, and then just run with that. And you can see, boom, there you go. Now it moves quite a bit more. And if I wanted to radiate a little bit more uh, temperature, I should say, if we wanted to cool it down a little bit more, rather than just using radiant pipe right there, I could actually just use like a normal pipe for a long distance. And that would actually work to keep this area a little bit cooler altogether but you can see how cold that is now. So that heat is now being built up over here. You can see it's 70 degrees right there. Um, so the pipe that's carrying this is going back inside of there and then it's turning into 40. So that's where we're deleting all of that heat. Meanwhile, this is just storing up more and more polluted water at some ridiculously low temperature inside of there. Yeah, look at how cold that is. So this is self-regulating here as far as how much it's running and that's powering up all of this really heavy equipment here and we can see that we still have plenty of natural gas up there its temperature is doing just fine we may want to take a scientist to go in there and actually analyze that at some point probably should analyze that before it gets too hot probably once we get exosuits set up we'll do that all right i don't want to store polluted ice i just want to store ice We'll set that to a nice high priority. We'll try to bring some of that ice over there, see what happens. Here we go, people are gonna get soggy feet. They're not gonna be happy about it. But there goes a bunch of ice. And you can see just how much of it we moved. We moved 6,000 some kilograms of ice in there. Now we just gotta wait for it to heat up over a long, long, long time. All right, so let's just do a little recap here. So all I set up today here was this natural gas generator that's nice and cold because it's running off of a thermal regulator. And that's keeping it obviously nice and nice and cold down there. Uh, we also set up the thermal regulator cooling loop for the natural gas geyser so that we protect this pump right there. It's pumped as much as it can for right now and the gas reservoir has backed up. This natural gas generator is also running this thermal aqua tuner there uh, which is currently trying to cool down the oxygen that's coming out of the electrolyzer. We've got a lot of heat in the base. We might have to do a little bit more here in the next episode to kind of sap away more of the heat that we have that's built up. We did a whole lot of uh, reworking of the pipes systems down here to kind of clean up some, some water of and then also repipe it back around into the electrolyzer so that we keep producing more and more oxygen and as we can see right now we have lots of oxygen in the base the heat is probably the one thing that i'm still concerned about but we also have room for more systems in here so we already used two but they're really not doing a whole lot and we got a room for a lot more than we can potentially expand out here just to kind of temperature control basically do a full, ba full base air conditioning if we really wanted to at this point. Although my dupes are plenty happy. Uh, we also transitioned over into a lot more omelets for food. You can see we have 100,000 calories of omelets and that should reflect in the duplicates morale if they're eating omelets. So that in turn should really give us some higher potential 
for greater jobs. So since mealwood is less valuable to me now because my duplicates are a little bit more picky on their food, I might actually reduce this and that'll save us a little bit of dirt, but then convert more of that over to a dust cap. Exosuits are going to be an important step here, I think, when it comes to trying to get over here to this water source. So probably my next focus is going to be that cool steam vent, trying to get up there, tap that water, bring it in, and make sure that we can we can fuel things like electrolyzers and more electrolyzers throughout the base. But there we have it. I think it's running pretty good. I think we're off to a good start here. But as always, there's a lot more work to be done here in oxygen, not included. I got one last cool thing to show you here. What? Check it out. That's pretty dope. I got some other things coming here on the channel pretty soon. And that might be one of them. At any rate, that's all I got time for today. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Stay awesome, guys. Peace. Brothgar.